let's talk Gerstner waves. So I'm making a boat thing in Unreal, which means I'm making a wave thing in Unreal, which means I'm making a Gerstner wave thing in Unreal, because Gerstner waves are how people do waves in video games. So I look it up online. Oh, great internet, what the hell is a Gerstner wave? And the internet says, here's a Wikipedia article written by our best and our brightest. The Wikipedia article's explanation starts with the flow field associated with the trochoidal wave is not irrotational, it has vorticity. And then it goes on like that for 90 pages. I don't know what's wrong with math Wikipedia. I don't think they care to teach anybody anything. I think they're just there to show off how much math they know and how many blue words they can put in every sentence. I've never learned a damn thing from any Wikipedia article about math. Uh, and this is no different. What's super galling about this is that Gerstner waves are incredibly basic. They are one of the most basic wave-related concepts that exists. And yet, you'd have a very hard time learning about them from the first three or four articles that Google spits up. Because they want to show off, they don't want to teach you. Let's talk about it. Let's start with the grandpappy of Gerstner waves, which is just a sine wave, right? A sine wave is a familiar sight to anybody that's been working in video games. Uh, and if you are trying to do an ocean in a video game, you have this big flat plane covered in verts, right? Because it's a mesh, so you've got all these verts making up the mesh. And then you move these verts up or down so that they're in the right spot to be part of the wave. Obviously, you can just paint waves on the surface, but if you want the waves to actually go up and down, you need to move the verts up and down. So you just plug their position into the sign, and then the output is how much you move the vert up or down by, right? This is pretty simple, but it's a standing wave, as I've explained it, so we really want them to cycle. We want them to move this way. So to do that, we simply add a time value to the phase. So, you know, they slowly move along. The nice thing about this is after enough time passes, they're right back where they started, because this is a cyclic pattern. So this is a very cheap way to calculate waves, because it just cycles forever, and we don't have to worry about it. All we have to know is the direction the wave is traveling, so that we can add in that time value to change the phase of the wave, so we can make it look like the wave is moving out, or moving in, or whatever. So if we have a big flat plane, an ocean, we can make the waves move this way, or this way, or even out from a center point in a circle. Because in all of these, we can figure out which direction the wave is traveling, and then we can use that to create a phase adjustment. We can adjust how far along in the sine curve it is based on time. And it repeats forever. The problem is... Um, this is a sine wave, it's not a wave wave. Waves of water look like this. And you can't get a sine wave to look like that. What happens, of course, is that water is physical. So when the wave comes in, what it really does is it pulls the water in, and then it pushes the water over, and then it comes crashing back. Wait a second, that looks like a circle. Well, we're already using sine. We, we could certainly throw in a cosine and make a circle, right? Welcome to Gerstner waves. So we have all of these verts that make up our ocean, right? And with a normal sine wave, we just move them up or down. With a Gerstner wave, we move them in circles. So... It's not that hard to think about, really. We were using sine before, now we're using sine and cosine. And this gives us this wonderful cycle where the water feels like it's being pulled back and then pushed up and then crashing forward again because of the way that circles work. This is really not any more complicated than a sine wave. You are using an extra math operation, because now you're taking a cosine as well as a sine, but it's not really conceptually more difficult. We already know which direction this vert needs to go because we know which direction the wave is traveling. In order to do the sine wave, where the wave slowly moves along, we had to know which direction the wave was traveling anyway. 
we just use that value again and we multiply it by cosine instead of by sine. And it's that easy. You can implement a Gerstner wave in an afternoon. Now, of course, the secret of all of these is that you don't implement one, you implement lots. There's not really much benefit in having one wave that just rolls around forever. You want to have something that feels more, you know, organic. So to do that, you generally have, you know, lots, maybe at minimum three waves that are constantly cycling forever, and their interference patterns create the result that you really want. But it's just the same thing over and over and over. You just calculate all of the waves and all of their effects added together are what you end up with. It's not a complicated concept, you're just doing a simple thing a lot. Gerstner waves produce really nice results, which I'm sure you've seen if you've used the Unity or Unreal water plugins. I'm using Unreal these days, and the Unreal water plugin looks great and is also a piece of shit. I don't know if they just gave up on it or what, but it uses Gerstner waves, and that's why I started looking Gerstner waves up, because the waves that they use actually look quite good. It looks really nice, the water in Unreal. And of course, the water in Unreal comes with a buoyancy plugin where you can attach buoyancy points to your boats or your crates or whatever, and they will float on the water. This, however, is where things fall apart. Their buoyancy, their buoyancy implementation is pretty trash. It's not a very good way to do things, especially not for a boat that is supposed to be driving forward or whatever. So I was trying to figure out how I could do it. How do I get the height of a wave? I want the height of this wave or this trough. I want to know exactly right here on this boat, what is the height of the water right there at this very nanosecond? And you just can't ask. Why can't you ask? Because it's all on the GPU, the graphics unit. Calculating out all of these sines and cosines is pretty fast, but you've got to do literally tens of thousands of them every 1 60th of a second. So you push that off onto your graphics processor, and unfortunately your graphics processor is not particularly chatty, and it basically just eats them. Now it's clear that under the hood, Unreal is doing something. I think they're printing to a texture, but I don't have access to that texture. The buoyancy plugin does, because I can see it putting dots on the waves, but I can't put dots on the waves. I can't find those values, and I've spent some time trying. Whatever they're trying to do is... It's all internal, and they're not sharing it with the rest of the world. Now, you could, you know, go into the code and try and figure it out, but I was like, I'll just do another Gerstner wave implementation. I'll just implement it. And then I'll just... I have the Gerstner waves that have been specified. I'll just put them through the math. It works fine with the small caveat that they're doing... Everybody implements Gerstner waves a little bit differently in terms of things like how fast they move and stuff like that. And I'm not really sure what parameters they're using in their Gerstner wave math because I can get the same result, but the times are all different. Like, the, f the speed of the waves are different. So, uh, more work. Maybe I'll just make it so that my Gerstner waves drive the water rather than their Gerstner waves. But either way, Gerstner waves are a very simple concept. It's just that the particles move forward and backwards along the wave as well as up and down. That's it. They move in circles. And if you know how to get the height of the wave in the Unreal Water plugin, uh, let me know. <laughs>